Islamic State radicals are also managing to carry out a successful global recruitment campaign. That's according to the latest report from a Syrian human rights watchdog. Well, last month, 6,000 men joined the jihadists, some of them from Western nations. And it's not just adults. The extremists don't mind having the young fight for them, too, like this 13-year-old uh, Belgian uh, boy. Earlier this year, he traveled to Syria with his uh, older brother to fight alongside the radicals. Now, the Islamic State has been increasingly turning to social networks. One extremist posted images of a child decapitating a doll in a reenactment of the American journalist execution. The caption urges followers to, quote, teach your children to cut necks, end of quote. Now, let's discuss the story with Sukhan Chandan, an activist and journalist who joins us uh, live from London. Now, uh, Mr. Chandan, uh, what do you personally think of the situation and specifically how much damage can this huge PR campaign of Islamists uh, have uh, on uh, the West and uh, Europe for that matter, as we know that they're opening up their centers in uh, the UK and Canada? Well, the propaganda from the death squads um, known as quote-unquote ISIS is nothing but actually a reflection of the mainstream Western foreign policy. Because Western foreign policy is saying Assad is a tyrant that needs to be overthrown, Putin is a tyrant that needs to be overthrown and supporting color revolutions, etc. China is a big problem. Um, you know, Libya before under Muammar Gaddafi needs to be overthrown. And actually with Libya and then with Syria, we've seen these exact death squads ally up openly together in the destruction of Libya. So we went in, in the mainstream and still today there's sympathetic voices in the mainstream who are reporting these death squads who are going from Britain, Belgium, France and other countries, but particularly Belgium, um, particularly Britain. And that's no coincidence because Britain has been in the, the forefront of developing this global entrapment strategy, this global counterinsurgency uh, uh, strategy. And the parallel can be seen actually with the way they dealt with the death squads in the occupied six counties of Northern Ireland, uh, the loyalist death squads. It's very similar. Basically, proxies uh, uh, promoted by London, Washington and Paris as enemies. So it develops this deceit and this fog of war and all of this mess. But, uh, but actually, you know, the, the, the encouraging of children to, to enact these depraved acts is again a reflection of the mainstream because if you see a lot of these young men who are no doubt oppressed by the system in Britain but being oppressed doesn't necessarily mean you go off and do this. No, yeah but that. what can be done you know what can be done to reverse this trend to change the situation to stop this spread? I think there's two main things that people should really focus on first of all is to ally, ally up with the effective and functional uh, counter-terrorism strategies, which n is not coming from uh, London and Washington, but actually is coming from Moscow, Beijing, Damascus. Uh, hitherto, it was coming from Tripoli, but that's no longer, uh, and from places like Algiers, etc. These are countries that have a viable counter-terrorist uh, strategy, and the terrorism is being promoted by London and Washington, because who is London and Washington's main ally in the so-called war on terror? It's no other than the two pillars that actually promote and facilitate and fund these death squads, which is, uh, which is the, the, the Gulf monarchies, particularly Saudi Arabia and the Qatari monarchy, and on the other hand, the Pakistani military intelligence. So there well, is... Well, Mr. Chandan, yeah, just, to, just want to uh, ask you uh, one question briefly as we're running out of time. You know, uh, the radical group is quite vocal, in fact, about, you know, what they want to do, and they specifically uh, threatened by saying, I quote, retake some Western states, uh, for example, Spain. Uh, do you think this is a real threat, or is this a um, uh, PR move? Very briefly, if we could. No, this is this is this is pure PR nonsense, and these people are promoted as enemies. Now, you know, these people wouldn't have got anywhere if they weren't promoted as enemies by the West, and the West wasn't bombing them and, and, and mushrooming them, and at the same time supporting them in Syria and Libya. So, so that there is no threat to Spain by these people. But what there is a threat is it's possible that the British intelligence services will allow one of these people to conduct some terrorism in London, just as they did under 77. The British intelligence services have all of these guys under heavy monitoring their phones, their computers, etc. Right. So Gan Chandan, activist and journalist, thank you so much for talking to us here in our International.